Alright guys, welcome to the newly rebranded Outside Interference, formerly SOS Wrestling, and we are going to be taking a couple series from the old channel over to the new channel. I mean, I guess it's the same channel, but you, you get the point I'm trying to make here. And uh, with that, we get the end of the Academy series. I mean, this isn't the last episode, but we are continuing the Academy series, and I'm very doubtful that there will be a Season 3. Although, if you guys put up enough of a fight, I'll have to reconsider. So, with that, January 2025, Wrestler of the Year, Tyler Black. I'm pretty sure that's a, that's a pretty solid pick right there. He is still in the WWE, which is pretty surprising. Uh, he is a Universal Champion, which is obviously not surprising. Uh, Company of the Year is WWE. That's the first time in a while, I believe. Obviously, my memory might be a little shot because, you know... We were gone for quite a while. Uh, team of the year is Tyler Black, or Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So Tyler Black and Joe Inouye. Match of the year is Cass and Amore defeating Reigns and Rollins. Uh, definitely not what I would have expected, especially considering what uh, Enzo Amore is doing with his career currently. But, you know, that's just the world of TEW, I guess. Show of the year is Survivor Series. Young wrestler is Azumi. I feel like she's won Young Wrestler quite a few times. Uh, at least, maybe not this current season, but definitely last season. Hold on, I gotta take a look at this. Yep, Young Wrestler of the Year three times in a row. That's quite an accomplishment. Veteran wrestler is Kenta. Female is Athena. Most Improved Company is the Iron League of Wrestling out of Australia. Independent is Priscilla Kelly. Manager is Maurice. Announcer is E.G. Tosaka. Color Commentator is Leobardo Magadan. And Referee is the good old Takayuki Yagi. And that does it for the awards of 2025. Taking a look at the mail. Uh, Brogan Bennett, New Areas. Uh, Frank Youngblood unfortunately left the DPW uh, for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. Jason Jones stepped down as Ring of Honor. That doesn't really matter. Smash extended Two Faces contract. Jacob Wolf relocated to Western Australia. Brogan Bennett relocated to the Ireland. Two Face got an offer with C4, another Canadian company, so that's good. Uh, French Sensation signed with Smash. And he is available in all game areas now. Alex Reynolds is now a technician. Junior Scorpio signed with the EWA, so I think that's his second contract. And that's the end of the news. Moving on to the short list. Alex Reynolds, we'll see how he did. I'm not expecting much, obviously, because he's not signed. But seven independent matches is pretty good in my book. And he won four of them. So highest rating 29, average rating 22. That's pretty good for the British independents. I'm expecting him to get signed sooner or later. Obviously, you can't really expect anything with this series because it is very volatile for everyone. It just look at Levy Payne and basically everyone in last season. Brogan Bennett, see how she did. Uh, a little bit less on the British independents, but still two wins, one draw, two losses. Uh, highest rating 24, average rating 16. So her ratings aren't quite there but at least she's getting booked. Dragon Fist, I was kind of expecting a lot from Dragon Fist. I'm very surprised that he hasn't been signed yet because he does have very nice ratings, 25 right there with a bunch of people I've never heard of. Actually, no, it's a different wolf. I thought we had uh, one of our own in there, but only one match for Dragon Fist, 25 overall. Frank Youngblood, uh, I, I interested to see if he has any DPW bookings and he does not but he does have 10 total matches this year on the independence alone and that just goes to show how you know uh, I'm trying to think of the word how in demand he is I guess and I wouldn't be surprised if he got picked up by another company next year highest rating 31 average rating 27 next up is the French sensation who is currently an enhancement talent in Smash. He didn't have any matches, surprisingly, for the second year in a row, which is really weird. I guess Smash doesn't need their enhancement talent. Hopefully he gets a match next year. And Jacob Wolf, 
Let's see how he did in Australia. No matches. That, I guess it's not surprising for Jacob Wolf. Still hasn't made his debut after being seven years pro. Ain't much to say about that. Junior Scorpio, EWA, and MMPW. Uh, don't believe he won any championships, though he did challenge for two. And it looks like almost all of his bookings were for MMPW with only one EWA appearance. Six wins, seven losses, and pretty damn good ratings. Highest 51, average 40. That is definitely the best out of anyone, obviously. And I think Junior Scorpio might be the person to enter the Hall of Fame this year. Maybe I'm calling it too early, but he's had a pretty great career to this point on the European Independence. Next up, Sam Barron. He got two independent matches, 13 and 12, or 13 and 11 rather, and uh, he won both of them, so I guess that's all you can ask for uh, out of, you know, two matches on the independents. Next up, Tiger Dream. Um, I don't really know what to expect. Well, I guess five matches on the Japanese independents is not too bad. Highest rating 20, average rating 17, and she did face Yoshiko. That's a wrong match. She faced Yoshiko quite a few times, actually. Three times in a row. So either there's a lack of women's independent wrestlers in Japan, or she just has a uh, pretty intense rivalry going on with Yoshiko. And up next is Two-Face. He is currently signed to two Canadian companies, and he has had not much uh, success in the win column there only having one win against eight losses, but his ratings are pretty good. Highest rating 48, average 38, and it looks like he had a rivalry with Homo, Craigslist Homo, great name, during the beginning of the year, which he lost, unfortunately. But, you know, he won one match, maybe a handicap to maybe a three-way, who knows. Uh, it seems that Smash doesn't really see him as a winner, as he lost all his matches in Smash, but he's 1 for 3 in C4, so hopefully he uh, gets a little bit better in that win column next year. Walter Wall is our last Academy graduate, and he got 6 matches this year, winning 4 of them on the British Independence. Highest rating 27, average rating 24. He, I think he's a wild card. I think he has the most potential of the guys not signed, or at least he's up there, because I think he can easily be slotted into any local British roster. Speaking of that, let's see how many local British rosters there are. Yeah, quite a few. There's quite a few places for him to land, so I think as soon as he does get a contract, he'll do great, and uh, it's just whether that day is going to be coming sooner rather than later. Or if at all, you really don't know with this series, but that's what makes it so great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, hopefully you enjoyed the rebranding, and uh, hopefully you guys are excited for all the new content. I'm pretty sure I'll have made a, uh, you know announcement video telling you guys what I'm going to be bringing at this point. If I haven't, uh, it'll be coming soon, maybe? I don't know what future me is thinking, because I'm recording this beforehand. It's, it's a whole mess, my whole schedule is kind of a mess. But who cares? Outside interference, first TEW episode of many to come, and I'll see you guys in the next one.